Welcome back everybody. Today we have this Model 3 in the shop. This is our first look at a car that actually nobody's ever seen. And Javier and I are going to move into the polishing steps. Now if you've been following our series, you've watched me wash and clay bar this car to prep it for our polishing steps. After we washed it, we noticed that the car has light scratches and swirls, as well as some kind of horrible marring on that side of the vehicle. So today, Javier and I, we don't have this car for much longer, that's why I have Javier here, but we're going to show you guys how to properly polish your car, because as of late, we've noticed that our videos have been kind of short, so we're going to go in depth on how to polish your car, what to use, and the proper techniques. So without further ado, let's get started. So to start off, Javier and I are going to be using the Torque polishers. I've chosen to go with the 10FX because this is one of my favorite polishers, and since Javier is a little guy, he's going with the X. Now also, you can see we haven't made it up to an orange HexLogic Quantum Pad. This is a good starting point because we're going to do a test spot just to make sure that we have the right pad and chemical combination. For those of you guys who have never polished before, this is the exact way to know what process and what steps to take to get your car back to the ultimate clarity to get that shine back. Because what you're doing is you're taking off a very fine layer of the clear coat. And you want to be sure that you're using the right amount of abrasive so you get all those scratches out and also that you're not using something too heavy where you're taking off too much paint. So in the back here, we have a small area where there's a lot of marring and a lot of scratches and where it almost looks like some kind of wild animal is leaning up against the car. So we're going to be using the V4 all-in-one polish with our orange pad. And this will give us the right idea if we're using too much or not enough of an abrasive. This way we can continue the same process over the rest of the vehicle. So right here, this is where it's hard to tell without the lights on there, but there's actually a bunch of scratches right here. You can catch them all the way down here. It looks like some kind of fingernail scratches and maybe like a pant belt buckle or something that leaned up against it. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to remove it using the torque polisher. So if I very pass me, yep, we need some pad conditioner. And what this is going to do is it's going to lubricate the pad. This prevents any kind of marring or excess friction. And then also our V4 all-in-one polish. And like we always do, we're going to shake it up a little bit and just apply a few drops to the pad. Since I'm working in a small spot, I'm only going to do four small dots. And then we'll blotch it out. And this is to prevent any kind of slinging or flinging the polish everywhere, we're making a huge mess. And on the lowest speed setting, we're going to spread this out in a fine layer. This way we can thoroughly work it in over the area that we're actually trying to polish using the lowest speed setting. Simple enough. And now we're going to bump it up to the highest speed setting where we're actually going to be polishing. We want to make sure that the machine is completely flat on the surface. I know it's kind of hard to do on the side of a vehicle to keep an eye on where exactly flat is, but you want to keep it as flat as possible. This way you're not digging in on areas, which creates a tiger stripe or a mooring effect. But by doing it perfectly flat, this is how you're going to remove those scratches in an even coat. Also, you want to cover about 50% of your last pass. This way that you don't see a difference in the change of shine, where you will see like a tiger stripe or a mooring. So we're just going to go all the way up to speed setting 6, and we're going to work this in until it goes completely clear, then we can check our work. Sir, is this a clean towel? Pretty clean. Okay. So once the polish has gone clear, or clear enough, you're going to take a clean microfiber towel and just buff off the excess. This way you can check your work and already can see it's done a huge job, a big difference between the before and after. We'll get the light out so we can show you guys what, exactly what we've done here. But basically by using this polish, it's diminished the light layer of clear coat to refine the whole finish, and now you've got a true black shine. So since I'm still sort of new to detailing, I decided to go with the Torque X, it's a little bit smaller. 
and it goes a little slower, but I get to really pay attention in the little intricate areas where it might be a little difficult. As you can see right here, it's a little dip. So I want to be careful, but I also want to get <coughs> the scratches out. So I'm going to be using, just like Nick said, you want to prime it up with a pad conditioner. That way it stays moist and you don't want it to fling everywhere when it dries up, if it dries up. And like Nick said, we're going to be using the V4 all-in-one polish because we don't have enough time with this car, but we want to do the best possible job on it. So you're going to want to just apply four dime-sized drops. All right. So we got our four dots, and you want to blotch it in the area you're going to be on, just like Nick said. You want to do small, you know, two by two sections. You don't want to go too far. You want to spread it around in the first level. And then you want to go on the fourth level on the Torque X, that way you can really get enough speed and enough cut to get through the light scratches, the light imperfections, and those light swirls that this Tesla has. Fourth level? Sixth level. Can't argue with Nick. All right, and just with uh, any DA, you want it to have the pad on the surface and not off, because then it'll just start flinging everywhere, and it's just more mess and more job you're gonna have to cover and do. Now, just like Nick, you can want to buff off the excess to reveal that really nice high shine. Remove, remove all those scratches, like just like a mirror-like fin. Whoa, shoot! That's how my face looks. Oh, bam! Looking good. So now that I've just finished polishing this majority of the vehicle, Javier's going to finish off the front end. We definitely want to protect the vehicle. So we're going to use Jet Seal, which is going to give us a durable protection against water spots, UV rays, or anything else that can etch and damage the paint for up to 12 months. Now you can use this by hand or machine. I've chosen to go by hand just so I can cover all the small areas on the trunk here because it has a lot of contours. And I've already shaken up the bottle. I'm just going to apply a couple lines to my applicator pad. And I'm going to spread it out just like I did when we were polishing. We're just going to dab it out at first. And then working back and forth in straight lines, we're going to give it a nice coating. You can also go back and forth in a cross-hatching pattern. This way you've ensured that you've covered the entire surface. That way you have a sure bond, nicely coated area that's going to last as long as it can. Now a couple questions that we get while we're polishing is how many pads do we use? 
Typically on a car like this one, where it's brand new or we're not taking up a whole lot of paint, we can use one pad to cover the entire surface. Now there's a lot of detailers that tell you that you need a new pad for every panel or you need to clean your pads throughout the job. It's not exactly necessary. I mean, you can do it, but it's not exactly necessary because um, on a car like this, again, where you're not taking up a whole lot, your pad shouldn't be clotting up with product. It shouldn't be clotting up with paint because you can see my pad, it's still fairly clean and I've done a majority of this vehicle by polishing. Now, if you're working on an older car where you're taking up a lot of paint with oxidation or if you're working with single stage, then you might need to use another pad or you might need to clean it throughout the job. But for such cases as this, one pad is plenty. So if you guys want to check out these products for yourself, head over to our website. If you like this car, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time right here in the Detail Garage. One last thing before we wrap this up, uh, I forgot to mention that you can also coat your glass with Jet Seal. This is going to help water sheet off, uh, especially in a car like this where you don't want to see any kind of water spots. Or if you're like me and you can't figure out how to turn on the windshield wipers, this is going to help that water beat away this way you don't have any kind of stains. So now that we're done with this, uh, a couple things about Jet Seal. This only takes about 15 minutes to bond. So once it's done with that, we'll come back with a clean microfer towel, probably something soft like a happy ending, and buff this off to unveil that high shine.